Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what am I doing? I am putting, finally putting the Ride Tech suspension, the street grip, on Smokey here. So, uh, today I'm working on the rear end. I have the, the front end. I'd like to say I came up with a really cool way to press it in, to press the bushings in, and yeah, no, and to get them, press them out. I, I don't have a press here, and I didn't want to damage anything, so I'm going to turn myself around here. <clears throat> I didn't want to damage anything, so I took it to a local tire shop, uh, alignment shop, and I'm having them press them in. Les Schwab, they're pressing them in for me. So, got that. Um, upper and lower control arms are being put together with the Delrin bushings. Um, so, that's being taken care of. Today, I'm going to be working on the back, getting the mono leaf springs set up. Um, I also have to do some measurements on the rear end. I've got to move the... Um, mounting plates the rear mounting plates over so that they line up since i moved everything in and what else i don't know anything else that comes along i guess uh yeah so i'm just super super excited and stoked. also um i'll have a video that talks about um, if i haven't already posted it uh that talks about just the amazing people on YouTube. And I've got to say that I am grateful for all the people on YouTube, especially the Tri-5 guys and the um, C10 guys that are out there. Uh, so many wonderful videos out there to help walk us through it. Uh, some of you guys that are my age grew up in a generation where we didn't have YouTube and you had to ask someone and you hoped that they had the answer. And if you didn't listen close enough, then they looked at you like an idiot. So now you can just look for your, look to your heart's content, find what you're looking for and hopefully find someone that's teaching the concepts, the way that you can understand them and replay them and stop and take pictures and anything you want. So what a wonderful time we live in. All right. So enough about that. Uh, let me move the camera down just a little bit here for you guys. Right here, got my old little iPhone working. All right, so uh, Delrin bushings. These are the Delrin self-lubricating bushings. Delrin, Delrin. I don't know. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, bushings that from Ritech that are self-lubricating. Super cool. And these are the CPP um, mounts that I got. Right. So to move the um, the leaf springs in for the pocket kit. These are the mounts that come with it or used to come with it from CPP when I purchased it. And these bushings fit perfectly. And CPP has two different types. So let me show you these here. <clears throat> so if you're not doing the pocket kit, they have a small internal that's for a 55 and then they have the large larger ones that are for the 56 and 57 well just so turns out that the smaller ones fit perfectly inside the cpp 55 um <clears throat> shackles upper shackle brace so uh, you have to tap them in obviously the tolerances are really close and they're just just machines so get this guy here and a little tappy tappy with the rubber mallet. Sorry guys, shaking the heck out of you there. Okay, now uh, the other thing, these bushings do not go in easily at all. So you have to press them in. I don't have a press, but they do say that you can use the shackle mounts to put them together. Uh, the bolts that come with the shock shackle mounts don't seem to be long enough, at least for me to go through. At least I honestly haven't checked them. I just grabbed a piece of altered. Maybe they do. Uh, let me check. Let me pull one out here. Got my bag of parts here. Reaching behind here. Maybe they are long enough and I'm just being a goober, which is probably the case. <sighs> nope, they're not going to fit. See, they're not long enough. They just go to there. So... What I did was grab a piece of all thread here. <clears throat> and I have a nut, just a grade 8 washer on the end of it. Put this guy like so. <clears throat> and then put another washer on this side and just mechanically 
put it on. Just like they were saying, the only difference is I'm using all thread instead of a bolt to do it. <clears throat> so I'll just put the all thread on here. You know what? I think I have it backwards. Yep, I'm gonna flip it around. One of the this all thread has. I don't have a die to run over the threads, um, but it has a couple little spatters from when I was welding that stopped the bolt from <clears throat> going down all the way. So I'm just gonna flip it like this, and it should work out fine. There we go. <clears throat> This other side doesn't really move very far because of that little weld splatter. And if I had a die that worked, I'd just run the die over it and that would fix it. But I don't, so we'll work our way around here. Where there's a will, there's a way. Okay. So, <clears throat> put this guy right here. Not too shabby. You got the birds chirping in the background here today. It's going to be a hot one. It was 106 yesterday. Oh, hot for me. Hot for me. All right. There we go. All right. Here we go. And I think it's because these Delrin bushings are self-lubricating that it allows this bushing this internal bushing to just go right inside without it sticking or having to put a wd-40 or anything like that on it to help it be lubricated as it's going into the socket here <clears throat> all right and here we go do 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 do, -do. Getting this set up here. A little resistance as we're finishing up and then squish it down. All right, and do it like so. And the bushing is in completely. No more taking bushings in and out and this and that. And we're set. So I'll let you guys see what that looks like now. Do, 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 do. There you go. So <clears throat> got the metal sleeve on the inside of the Delrin bushing. And then this is the mount itself. Uh, I talked about in other videos, but I really like the way that CPP here. I'll show you guys a little better. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Uh, instead of just being flat, coming down flat, they actually bring it out at an angle. The, um, oh gosh, the feet, I guess, of the bracket come out at an angle, which give it a lot of stability, lateral stability. This thing is solid. It's not going anywhere. <clears throat> so yeah, not too shabby. There we go. Hey, there I am too. All right, so got this guy in um those are the leaf springs those mono leaf springs got the rear end i <laughs> gone back and forth about the type of rear end we were going to use we're going to use one of the 12 volts we take out of the c10s or what and i was watching um dan's tri fives and i'll put a link to his youtube channel down really really educational youtube channel he's using a stock rear end and i just didn't think they were stout enough not that we're putting a lot of horsepower maybe 400 horse down but uh he's building uh, a 350 fuel injected 350 that he's putting on um i think he's doing i'm trying to think it's a um government wagon that he's putting together 55 I, no or is it a 56 i don't remember the year <laughs> but it's one of the government issued wagons and he's putting a fuel injected 350 in it and he's got a stock rear end so i went hey i've got the stock rear end that'll work and because of that the rear disc brakes I'm taking off of the four to nine inch that I bought uh, are CPP rear disc brakes and um, they're drilled and slotted 
I'm not going to be using those on my Ford 9. I'm going to buy wheel woods for mine front and back. So my dad's going to have CPP front calipers, uh, Hyatt's drop spindles in the front, and then he'll have, I'm going to put a lowering block, and then it's going to have, um, he'll have the CPP uh, drilled and slotted rear disc brakes as well. So pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to put you guys on hold just for a sec. Magic of video. I'll be right back, and I'll show you guys kind of what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's see if this is gonna work. Here is the bracket uh, that goes on, goes for the disc. And I'm hoping, crossing fingers and toes, that it is going to mount on here. I think I'm gonna move you guys around here. Okay, so now you should be able to see a little easier what I'm looking at here. All right, here's all my street grip stuff. I've got everything laid down over here. You guys can see that. There's everything laid down, all right. And I'm going to find a place for me to get down here and see what I can do on my knees. All right, where are we? There we go. There's my ratcheting wrenches. <clears throat> okay, so let's hope that I can do this, this 916 here. <clears throat> This will be slick if that's the case. I'm hoping because I was talking to a friend and he was saying that these are, I guess, I don't know the name of them, but Dana, I guess, these rear ends are Dana's, or which are the same thing as a Ford 9. They're just the early versions of them because the third member's on the inside. So if that is the case and they do have the same mounting locations, then this bracket should fit on, and I don't have to buy a new bracket from CPP. And I don't have something else holding me up that I've got to wait on. So I can just move forward. Then again, maybe it's not. <laughs> maybe I'll have to order another bracket. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. We're flying by the seat of our pants here. <clears throat> Okay, fingers, toes, we're crossed. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna fit or not. And it looks like it might not. Crap, all right, well, it's so close though. It's so close that it's not fitting. Let me try it this way, see if this works. No, it is not. It's just off. Just off. Well, I'll be giving CPP a call. <clears throat> and getting, all I need is this piece right here. The center spacer section right here. <clears throat> okay. BR9B is the center this center, this center location needs to be moved. Let me see here. If it sits like this, which I believe it does, so the disc brake sits, the disc mounts over on the, closer to the wheel. <clears throat> then it looks like, far bracket will work. Yeah, and then they're both off by just a hair. And then it's hitting down at the bottom here. So I'll be giving CPP a call this afternoon so that I can get that, get this bracket lined up from them. Hopefully I don't have to buy both pieces. Hopefully I can just buy this intersection right here and that'll relocate everything. And let's see, one other thing I was thinking is I need to find out if the discs, the rotors themselves are gonna work on the, um, 
on the axle, or I might have to turn the inside of the axle down to match. Well, let's just use my caliper instead of taking it off and trying to fit it. Let's see what we're looking at here. <clears throat> All righty. So inside we are at to 5164 13/16 2 and 13/16 all right let's see what the inside of this guy is here Just by a hair. And this is two. And <laughs> 99 over 128. So, um, let's do this one again here. This side, one more time, is. Let's find out. Here. Yeah, gonna have to have the axles turned down as well. Uh, what I'm talking about, guys, let me show you here what I'm talking about, what I'm looking at here. <clears throat> okay, so inside of the axle, this center section right here, and this center section right here. So I'm going to have to take the axles out and have the inside this turned down just a hair so they'll fit. And I can use these, guys, these uh, discs on them. <clears throat> But that's what's going on, guys. I'll, I'll come back, guys, once I give CPP a call and get some things ordered and let you know what's going on. So, the rear disc brake saga continues. I spent all yesterday, um, not all yesterday, but a lot of yesterday, calling, waiting, 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 waiting on hold. But the tech support people at CPP are awesome, fantastic. They did something I could have done instead of waiting and waiting and waiting. They just Googled the part numbers for my brackets and turns out they're not CPP, they're Speedway Motors. So let me show you. All right, so these are the brackets <clears throat> that I have that attach the rotors to the Ford nine inch and they are part number right there. You guys can see it. It's B, R, 9, B, and the bottom one here is C, S, B, 9. Well, the guy at, uh, at CPP Googled those numbers and they came up Speedway. I talked to the guy at, C at Speedway, really, really knowledgeable and super nice. Both guys were really nice. Just took a little while to get to them. Um, and turns out they don't have a bolt-on bracket for... Um, this bracket that attaches that attaches the rotor so it's a weld on which is okay that's fine I'll just you know clearance it and do what I need to do so I've got that ordered about $90 got both got the bracket and got two extra um, of the bolts that go into the caliper so that's where we are right now so just waiting to get that. Uh, I've also got those A-arms, uh, the front eight, front eight arms. I've got the A-arms, the upper and lower, that are at Les Schwab, uh, getting the downward bushings pressed in. And now I'm going to start working on the rear end, getting those perches mounted. 
so that I can get everything set. So next video, I'll be working on those perches. Thanks guys for checking everything out. Hopefully this is a little entertaining, uh, really good entertaining stuff. If you want to go to Montana Garage, um, also um, Dan's Tri-Fives, Half Rods, really got to go to Half Rods, check him out. Um, and I've got a couple others, um, Kyle Phillips, check his out for racing, find out what a drive by really can do with a speed tech chassis and all that good stuff. Thanks guys. And Rusty wrenches if you're C10 guy. All right. Thanks guys. We'll talk to you later. See ya.